Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Eddie Marcus here. Again, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for you. You know, my real mission is, every time I speak to you, is to offer you reasons above the suggestions of why you should put your faith and put your trust in God, an invisible spirit responsible for all that you can identify. Put your trust in a power that is able to center the earth wherever it is and all the other stuff that happens just like it's supposed to. But given us an opportunity to learn about that power by giving us the ability and the authority to exercise that power, the power of peace and prosperity and freedom and joy and happiness and the fulfillment of dreams, our dreams, that power. This power I call, and others have as well, a moral power. It is considered to be the most highest power that we as humans could uh, refer to. You know, you got the parent power, you got the local government, and it goes up little branches, county, state, and federal. And then you got it backed up by Constitution, and you got it supported by Supreme Court. And you know, we have learned that each of those institutions uh, operate with individuals. And individuals got different personalities, and some are corrupt. And it makes it appear as though their connection with any group or any agency is corrupt as well. As long as this corruption is made available, made known, and it is maintained and not dealt with. You know, you find out something going on, but you put it aside and act like it's okay this time when you're holding everyone else accountable. That crap doesn't work, but that's the way of the world because that's the makeup of the individuals that are participants in the particular spaces of power, as it were. And so when we have that, if you took people in my community on the same block and everybody got together and they just start talking about different things that's important to them, you would find out that some people are talking about the same things and some people are talking about different things. And yet if you go to a different block, it would be all encompassing the same conversation. And so if you went throughout my whole state, individuals just get together talking, you would hear talk, talk, talk. And you would hear confusion, 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 especially when you start looking for solutions. <clears throat> because when people start looking for solutions, they really start thinking about what works best for them. And that selfishness that it rests in their makeup makes them satisfied with your discomfort. And so as long as that is the case, you're not going to come up with any solutions for anything. None whatsoever. Republicans got no solution for America. Democrats got no solution for America. Those in between got no solutions for America. White folks got no solution for America. Black folks got no solution for America. And you got all of these individuals representing all these different groups, all of them complaining about what someone else is doing. If you just try me, they say. And yet, all of this has been tried and nothing, nothing has worked. And so you say, well, how can we find something that works or what is it that works? Especially when you say the Democrats want something, the Republicans want something else, and some what they're doing now is this time the Democrats can have and the Republicans suffer, and next time the Republicans have and the Democrats can suffer. That's... <laughs> That is a game that uh, we are too old to continue to play. So what is it <clears throat> that works? You have to ask the individual, what is it that works for you? Just you, not your perspective all out there, but just for you. And I'm sure that every last one of you would say being satisfied. Satisfied would mean those things that I just got through saying a moment ago. Exactly every individual. And then if you ask yourself, well, what would it take to uh, to meet your requirements? And then you think about 
the resources are already available. But without the support of others, you have to be responsible for everything. And everything is there if you still desire everything. So you put your hands to work on what you know and learn what you don't know. You find you got yourself a big problem. You're going to end up with maybe a hood or a tent or a little cave. And that would be fine as an individual. But as a group of people, a mass group of people. That is not fine during these times. Maybe at some time past, but not at these times. And at these times past, all of us still get required those same basic things. And the resources are still here. And each of us got something that we can do. The gift is that we don't have to be providers for everything. We just provide a potion of that which we love the most. We allow that to be engaged in the process. That's the way the invisible power got it designed. Not for money. You don't come here saying with some computer ideas and start thinking about money. Oh, but that one that would destroy peace and prosperity does. Oh, you can make all kinds of money. You can be a big shot. You can be a millionaire. Oh, a billionaire. Come here with the watches. Oh, man, you can do so much stuff now with a watch. You can, oh, hold, hold it. You can be a billionaire. Come on, let's show you how you can be so important above everybody else. When that information that you brought to this society, that information that you brought into the human species, this, my friend, is a gift from that invisible power to be introduced through these ones that bring it for the purpose for which it is used for to benefit those in human that wants to use it. Oh, golly, you got me talking to you now. But that's what it's for, not to make money. But everybody's been taught it's about money. You've been taught that by a system absent the moral code. Then we say, let's go to the moral code. Let's just talk about that for a minute. Everything that the world is doing, all are evil that the people are suffering, the pain and suffering. There is a so-called moral organization supporting it to the fullest. One example, right-wing churches, they are all big churches, white folks running them and a few black people too. All of them wanted the, the heaven to come and support the biggest lie in America and well, the biggest liar on the stage today. Everything. I mean, he's despicable when it comes down to applying his actions against what is righteous. But the, those people over there representing heaven, representing God, say, come on over here. He has no solutions. They got no solutions. Even their God got no solution. But they are out there. So you might be saying, well, how can we tell the difference? Let me tell you something, and you can check it if you want to, but for me. For me, the God that I know loves me. And it's not a single one of you that God loves any less than me or any more than me. The same heavenliness that God wants for me, God wants that same heavenliness for you. And God will not do anything to distract or take from you, to rob you from those basic human rights. Not God. The anti-God would. The devil would. And not only that, the devil will kill you. But you know what? For me, I'm not telling you this now. This is for me. For me, that is the door out of hell. When you represent God, that invisible power that is talking about love, that cement that holds things together. And the devil say, you got to go. You can't glorify God any better than that. And if God has put you here in this hell to do what has been done, and now that moment of graduation comes and it's to be blue, nothing, no more from that creator 
<laughs> I don't know. That might, might be another thing. But if it's not another thing, it's the best thing. But if there is something else, my, 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 my. What is it going to be? I don't know. Probably another test. But as long as you've got God, you can win every time. You can't lose. And don't you ever believe that death is your enemy. Death is your friend. It's how you get to death that determines where you're at. So I want to thank you so very much, ladies and gentlemen, for giving me just this moment in time. I want you to know again, my whole message is to tell you that the moral law is superior to all law. And the moral, moral law it benefits your happiness, your satisfaction. Who is you? Eight billion of you. However many of you on this earth. That's what's been given to you. Now, there are those who will take it from you. And there are those who accept them taking it from you. I want you to know that those that take it from you and those that accept it are partners working together for the devil against God. And only those that say to hell with hell and stand up for heaven in righteousness are the ones that escape. Now, where are you? Bye-bye. <laughs>